Welcome to the 1988 Intercollegiate Water Ski Nationals. Coming to you live from Rio Linda, California. A weekend of very hot, very exciting collegiate water skiing with some of the women's and men's best collegiate water skiers in the world here today. Today we'll see skiing the trick event, the slalom event, and the jump event. Live from Rio Linda, California. Prepare yourself for a hot weekend of skiing. We're going to start today's event off with the women's slalom event. We'll go back over to Lake One and pick our event up first with our first skier of the day from California State University, Sacramento. Her name is Shauna Renfro, and she'll be coming in at 34 miles an hour, 15 off with a little bit of a tailwind. Here comes Shauna on her first pass with a little headwind, and Shauna's really going to have to set the pace today, folks. There's a lot of competition, tough competition ahead of her, and she's going to have to do everything she can here to get her best run in early. The wind hopefully will die down later for today, and Shauna's got to deal with it now, though. A very nice, good first looking pass at 34.15. Shauna exhibiting a very nice skiing style. She's been skiing for quite a long time. Shauna's from the Wet Set area and has skied with her dad, who was a professional water skier. And Shauna exhibiting some of that style here today. Looking good, coming right at us into three, folks. I know the Sac State people have all their hopes set on Shauna for the women's solemn event, and she's uh, looking to. Looking very good right here today, and she heads right for six, and you can see already she's getting down course a little bit as she heads into that upwind. Really requires a, a lot hard, harder pull, and that's going to be a problem for Shauna later on today. We should see her coming right back now at 28 off. A very tough pass, especially in the, in the wind at your back. 28 off, 34 miles an hour. Shauna needs to make this pass to be competitive in today's event. Good first ball for Shauna. She pulls right for two. She looks like she might be getting a little bit down course now here. As she, you can see there, she had to really crank a turn. And oh, oh, that's unfortunate for Shauna. An early fall for her, but still a good first pass. It is early in the morning here, and a good tailwind in her back. That'll bring up Heather Masiello from the University of Central Florida. Heather's first pass. As you'll see, Heather exhibits that Central Florida style. Very smooth, very aggressive skiers. And she looks very in control at this point. A lot of UCF people here today, all the way from Central Florida. Very good, good group of skiers. Good successful first pass for Heather, and we'll see her come back. What I believe is 34 miles an hour. This still looks like it might be long line. Hard to tell from this point up here. You know, I'll get a ruling from Bob in just a minute. We'll go back and see what we get. Heather, very smooth. Oh, and just as I say that, she almost goes out the front, but she's able to recover very nicely and really cranks that last turn. Very good pass for Heather. This is still Heather Masiallo from Central Florida on her third pass. Heather looking to beat four at 28 off unofficially. Heather, good style again. Looks like the wind might have calmed down just a little bit for her, although not much. It's still been quite windy this morning for the ladies. Ooh, she really leans over there at five, and I don't know if she can make it to six, and she does just make it around six ball. Incredible. She's had some very good recoveries this morning. There's some of our Central Florida crew right there voting on Heather. And this will come, here comes Heather Masiello back on her, this looks like it might be a 34 mile an hour pass. She's waiting at one. Good. Coming to two, she's down course a little bit. That headwind, I think she's having a problem to deal with right now. Very tough headwind, you have to pull a whole lot longer. But she's looking good. Oh, she, there she is cranking the turn again. And she just, oh, good effort as she pounds on six ball and gives us a wave and she's all right. Good job by Heather Masiello. UCF fans are very happy about that, and they should be very happy because here comes a very good skier from UCF, Christy Overton, one of the top women skiers in today's event. A very competitive skier, very wide known in the world of water skiing, not only collegiately but professionally. Christy at 22 off, taking a leap ahead of everybody else to come out very tough with that downwind is a very tough pass. Looks good. Christy's a very smooth skier on that Conley water ski. There's a lot of practice out there in Central Florida. And the UCF fans are screaming back there for her, and that's a good job for Christine. Here she comes back at 28 off. She needs four here, folks. Four to get ahead of Shauna Renfro. We'll see how she does it. She comes into the headwind. She's going to have to pull a little bit harder. Christy really flying across the lake there. She comes right at us at three ball. Looking good. And here's a, this is the critical buoy where Shauna fell earlier. And Christy makes it around a very smooth, very smooth pass. And a good 28 off pass for University of Central Florida's Christy Overton. Christy will be pulling out to come back at 32 off. Very tough pass. This is only our second skier of the day to get into 38 off, 32 off. And Christy coming right back at you. If she runs this pass, she could be in very good contention to win this event. 
Christy coming right at us at two balls. You can see she gets in a little trouble right there. Screaming at three, and she really has to break a turn hard as she comes right at us at four. Oh, things are getting tough down there in the grinds. Oh, she just cannot make it around five ball. You can see the speed she kind of picks up there. Almost lost our cameraman in it. That means it'll be Helena Shaylander from Rollins College. Helena skiing in the blue suit. Helena, very, another popular name in the world of water skiing. Her and her brother Michael Shaylander. Good skiers, not only in this event, but in the jump event. And a good, smooth, smooth first pass for Helena. Rollins College has some very, very strong women skiers this year. As they bring Helena around the island, we'll see her come back at what I believe to be 20, 28 off, I believe. This will be a tough pass for Helena. It looks like the wind might have calmed down just a little bit since this morning. Yeah, so this is 28 off for Helena. Good first pass. And her second pass is just as equally as smooth. She again skiing on a Conley. A lot of Conley skiers out here today. And she goes around like no problem at 28 off. Had a very professional attitude. A very nice person to me. I had a chance to speak with Helena this weekend. And a uh, very nice personality. We'll see Helena come back at 32 off. And this will be the critical pass if she can put her into first place in this run. She needs to get around five ball. And she's looking good coming in at three. Very smooth skier and very strong skier. And this is the critical buoy right here. She makes it around and just hooks it right where Christy fell. And she's around six in a very, very good and tough 32 off pass. And unofficially, I believe that puts Helena in first place. At 35 off, she'll be coming right back at us. And folks, this is a tough pass for anybody, men, women, or children. We'll see if she can make this. Her first ball at 35 off is excellent. Around two, you can see she has to hook a turn and she's really pulling. She has to move around 45 miles an hour though when she comes across that balloon. She cannot get back to four. But unofficially, that puts her at three at 35. And I'd say Helena is going to be tough to put out of first place in that class. There's only one person left to do it. Her name's Kim Laskoff. And if anybody can do it, it's Kim. Kim also skiing for Rollins College, an excellent skier. She holds records in the slalom event on the Pro Tour. And you'll see why right here as she exhibits a perfect skiing style. Very smooth, very technical. With the, head, with the downwind, pushing her down course a little bit. And I believe this is probably 22 off also. And we watched Kim right around six ball. If you want to take a lesson on water skiing, people, this is who you want to take it from. Kim is an excellent, very technical skier. And that'll believe they wait for the ducks to clear the course. Now to bring up Kim Laskoff at 28 off. Coming down the end of Lake One in Rio Linda, California. A beautiful, a little overcast Friday morning. Hopefully the weather will pick up a little bit this weekend. Kim looking good right at us at three ball. See that style, she's so smooth, just waiting for the ball. Hair floating in the wind there, and she heads for six. Good, 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 good pass for Kim. We'll pull out and we'll wait Kim to come back at what I believe to be 32 off the line. This is Kim Laskoff from Rollins College. This should be 32 off. She needs to make this pass and one more to take the lead from Helena Shaylander. Kim coming right at us at three ball, and here she comes at four, and she's gonna be very, very smooth. I have yet to see her make any real flaws in her skiing today, which means, leads me to believe that 35 off may, may be quite easy for her. And this is our second skier today in 35 off. We saw Helena just a minute ago, could not quite make it around the five ball. But we'll leave it up to Kim Laskoff to make it. This is 35 off. Look, she needs to get around five to take first place here. We'll see if she can do it. She comes into one looking very good as she starts screaming at two ball. And she breaks forward in the waist, and that's going to cause some problems. I don't know if she's going to make it to five. She hooks, oh, she hooks four. She's got to get around five, and can she do it? And she just gets her ski around before she ends in the water, and that will give her first place. Now we'll take you right over to Lake Two in the men's slalom event. On the water now, we will have Justin Anderson, our top seed, the only man capable of bringing down Brian Dolgar with a lead at 335. And Justin uh, is another ex-Sac State person in the fluorescent orange. Justin skis at, your marine, at the Marine World and a few pro top stop tours. Justin was a member of the Sac State ski team not too long ago. Once again, he was purchased from the California Breeding Grounds. Okay, Justin's from up north, Redding, California. Very fine three-event skier. Won money on the Pro Tour in jump. It's a 7,000 point tricker and capable of running into 38 off in slump. So Justin's got to be one of our favorites for the overall. Okay. 
Okay. This is Justin Anderson at, I believe, 28, Scott? 28 off. Justin Anderson's really worked on his slalom. He has. I, I Justin lived with me, uh, lived with Brian and I here on the lake about a year and a half ago, and I got an opportunity to do a lot of skiing with him. He's a very knowledgeable skier. He's been skiing since he was practically born up at Mike Siderhound Ski School. He was skiing before he was born, I he think. He was. Yeah. In the womb. He was one of the womb skiers. Pressure is off. nothing to Justin. He's skiing pro tour stops in front of millions and millions of screaming people. 32 off. Fluorescent orange. Fluorescent orange. orange. Justin EP. is looking strong. Good two ball. Oh. Nice edge change into three. He is very early at this 32. Look at that body position. No problem at all. Easy He's just 32. waiting on six ball. This is Justin Anderson, 35 off. 35 off. He needs to get to ball four for the victory. Let's see if Justin can do it. The final uh, skier of the day. Anything he does here, folks, is over. UCF. He's get past his three ball. Let's watch Justin Anderson. Ooh. Strong one ball. Oh, oh good down course at two. Brown on the water, 36 miles an hour, 22 off. That's they eight. call him DTMB up in Chico for downtown Matt Brown. Let's give him a big round of applause. He's a freshman, first year intercollegiate water skiing. Very strong slalom skier. Matt skiing very well in the AWSA tournaments this year, Scott, and he was actually penciled in to go to Sac State, and then Chico happened to steal him from his. Oh, oh no problem at all. DTMB, 22 off. <laughs> a good first pass for Matt. Okay, this is Matt Brown coming in from Chico on his second pass at 28 off. Okay, DTMB, 28 off. Two off. Let's watch downtown Matt Brown and the people from Chico out there. They're firing up Big Matt here. Yeah, he Pretty good. One ball that time. Looking good at two though. He is looking real strong. All right, Matt Brown, 32 off, no problem at all. Matt skiing on the Conley HP, carrying around six successful balls at 32 off. Okay, Matt Brown at 35 off, coming down from the east. That's the south. That is the south. Let's watch downtown, Matt Brown. A little forward into one ball there. Ooh, hooks one. Good side. one, though. He's looking okay. Right here is the mark our leader is. There's and, oh, two and a half. He's, he's cannot... hanging on slide. Oh. Looks like it might be an unofficial two and a quarter, 35 off. The Chico crowd is just going absolutely wild. And you can see Matt's baseball style there, that slide he took, Scott. He Trying did. Trying to get himself back into the course. Okay, this is Jason Predes at 22 off in the hot tank on an HO for Sacramento State. Jay, one week ago today, was at 38 off. He did not party last night. He could be doing real good things here. Okay, Jay Paredes, 22 off, 36 miles an hour. Sac State's freshman sensation. Jay was a men's uh, Western Regional overall champion, capable of tricking in uh, eight of his eight tournaments over 6,000 points. Okay, this is Jason Paredes at 28 off. Okay, we have a question from the crowd. Have Ron, John, and Kerry from Alabama located the woods? I hear oh. some giggling down there. I, if they locate the woods, I want to be there watching because who knows what's going to happen. I want to film it. Okay, let's watch Jay Paredes. Jay is very smooth. Screaming 28 off. Four. And until last weekend, Jay had not missed 32 off in a tournament all year long. This is Jason Paredes, 32 off, 36 miles an hour, Sacramento State's pink shorts, HO skis. Where can he go wrong with a good one ball right there? Okay, well, we're going to stop and focus our attention to Jason Paredes, 32 off. Oh, Holmes is making a nice 32 off right here. 
look good. Jay Paredes just cruised 32 real easy. Good 32 pass. Okay, let's watch Jay Paredes, 35, first place with three buoys. Brian Dulger still hanging there. We got a good story to tell you from Alabama after Jay's done skiing. 35, oh. three right here. This is the trick ball. Nobody has made it right past there. Oh, my Jay God. Oh. And he didn't make it either. Oh, man. Jay frustrated, but still a good, and that might even put him in tie for first place. No, two and a half on a three. At, somewhere between two and a half and three at 35, and that has... Obviously been the stumper today. Nobody has made it around that three ball into four. Jeff McClanahan from the University of Texas. Texas. This guy's a Texas boy. He's a big boy. Boy, he is a big boy. They say everything's bigger in Texas. Yeah, his rope is long, isn't it? His has got a long old rope. It looks like about, is this 15 off, Scott? Is that what we're at? Uh, yeah, it looks like it could be 15 off. Where do they ski in Texas? Do you know? Uh, in Texas, I think, is where they ski in, in Texas. Texas? In the Gulf of Mexico down there. Just so big, he skis anywhere he wants. <laughs> okay, Jeff McClanahan. 22 off. University of Texas, I believe, in Austin. That's the one. Okay, good deal. There are about 100 University of Texases, but there's only one UT at Austin. Let's watch Jeff McClanahan. On Jeff. Okay. I have Matt, uh, Jeff's teammate, give us a little okay. commentary on Matt, Jeff's Matt, why don't you pump Jeff through this run here, 28 off? Well, Jeff usually runs his pass every time, and he's looking real good right now. He usually doesn't have any problem with this pass. He's skiing good in practice. Okay. What kind of ski does Jeff ski on? HP, Conley. All oh, right. Good, is that a good 28 for him there? Real good 28. Jeff McClanahan, University of Texas at Austin. Let's give him a big round of applause. This is 32 off. This has been the stumper pass for us today. 35 off? Oh, man, there's 35 off. There's two. Jeff is definitely on our way to, oh, two oh, and a half. Oh, God. unfortunate early fall. That mysterious three. That was 35 off, not 32 off, so that's an okay run for Jeff. Okay, Brian Dolgar, Sac State, coming in 36 miles an hour, 22 off. Yeah, Brian's not having any, any problem at all. Brian's getting on the new Conley concept. And if you watch Brian's style, he's a very smooth skier here at 22 off and a very strong side win. Because Brian looks very smooth here. So he can get that from 28 off as he pulls out. Just keep Brian right back in second. This will be 28 off, Brian Dolgar. Today, Brian Dolgar, 28. Awful. Okay, well, we'll have to hold off on the carry interview. Watch Brian Dolgar a little forward through the gates, but gets it back at one ball. Brian's got to be a crowd favorite out here. Instrumental in putting on this turn. Let's give him a big round of applause as he comes by the podium. 28 off. Oh, yeah. Brian's on that new concept. Okay, this okay. is Brian Dolgar at 32 off. Okay, Brian Dolgar, 32 off. And Kerry from Alabama doesn't drink by choice. So that's pretty impressive. Oh, tough one ball for Brian. Looks like he's skiing real well out there. Nice, easy run for Brian Dolgar. Just stroking it. Oh, no problem. Hey, Scott, I think... And I've seen Brian ski a lot. I think he's using a real conservative style here today. 35 feet off the line. I believe the leader is one ball. Brian could definitely get three or four at this pass. It'll be looking good. Good, strong one ball. He might be on his way. Good two. He's pulling hard into three. Nice, slow three ball. He's oh. definitely on his way. Oh, just inside of four. Slide, stands back up. Oh, good looking good run. Three buoys, 35 off for Brian Delgar.
That put Brian unofficially in first place with about, what is that, Scott? Three buoys at 35 off. Three at 30. That's a good pass for Brian. Real strong ski for Brian. I'm sure he'll be happy with that. Let's take a look at their standings at this point, then. In the women's slalom, we see Kim Laskoff pulled out in first place from Rollins, followed by Helena Shaylander from Rollins, Christy Overton, and Heather Masiala, both from Central Florida, and finally in fifth place, Shauna Renfro from CSUS. If we turn to the men's division, we see Brian Dolgar, a winner from Sacramento State, in first place. This is a very tough event, and Jeff McClanahan and Jason Preddy's tied both from CSUS and the University of Texas, followed by Matt Brown from Chico and Justin Anderson from Central Florida. A very tough men's slalom event. Off the winner of the 1988 women's slalom event. Kim, how did the event go for you today? Uh, fortunately, everything went well today. It was a little windy, but uh, fortunately, I was able to compensate, and it felt good out there, so I was able to put everything together. And once again, congratulations <laughs> to Kim Laskoff. At this point, we'll go to the overall division, overall scores from the first event, and we can see that Rollins College is first place at 25.05. UCF at 24.05 and CSU at 23.45, a very close breakdown. Now let's go to Brian Dolgar and talk about his event. Today I figure at 3 at 35 off uh, with the big guns in this tournament, I mean this is a big national caliber tournament, I figure that was about good enough uh, for 10th place. We got Justin Anderson, he's, I know is a 38 off skier, uh, Jason Peretti is from Sacramento, is a 38 off skier. Uh, John Ricard, he won the AWSA Nationals this year, he's also uh, very capable in the 38 off. Um, so I, I mean, Honestly, I didn't really think I had a chance uh, to, to pull off with a victory today. But that's how it turned out. Once again, congratulations to Brian Dolgar on a successful water skiing event and also a very successful tournament. Well, now we'll go right into the women's trick event on Lake 2 from Rollins College. Michelle Mason on her first trick pass of the day. Michelle, one of the many Rollins skiers in this event. Just gets in that last trick there at the end of her run. A very good run for Michelle. Rollins College are typically very good trick skiers. Their women's team is exceptionally strong. Here comes another Rollins tricker. Her name is Ton Larson. Many people familiar with Ton, an HO skier, professional skier. And uh, you'll see why right here. Very good style. Ton looking good as she performs a toe run here. Very difficult maneuvers to perform by, for anybody. She makes it look very easy here. I can personally tell you that that's usually what happens to me right there, and it's not that easy. As you can see Ton in the water a little bit earlier than she probably expected, but a good run for Ton. As I said before, a lot of rolling skiers in this event. And we'll bring up Ton's sister right now. Her name is Britt Larson. She's also an exceptional skier. Very hard for me to tell the difference between the two, skiing-wise and even looking at them personally-wise. This is from Rollins College. Let's take a look at Britt Larson. Good run for Britt, another she come, decides to come out open with a toe, doing almost the exact same as her sister did. In fact, she almost fell in the same pot or spot her sister just did, so I don't know, maybe something in the water there, we'll have to take a look. But Britt Larson in the water from Rollins College, and as I said before, here comes another Rollins College tricker, Elena Shaylander. Elena, another strong three-event skier, we'll see her in the trick. See if she can get past that stumping point the time Britt fell. Watch for a minute. Oh, oh, oh. 
finishing out her toe run, Elena Shaylander with a very good, good pass. She's able to complete that run. We haven't heard the bell yet. And she just fall right at the end and gets her last trick in. A good run for Helena. And finally, our final women's trick skier of the day from the University of Central Florida. Her name is Christy Overton. We saw her this morning in the slalom event. Another exceptionally strong three event skier. Christy on a Conley water ski here. She gets ready to attempt her toe run. She's a very technical trick skier. It looks like a very good run for Christy. Balance is so crucial here at this point. The one moment you're off balance, you can lose your whole run, and she's very happy with that, I think. And that will put Christy in first place with a total point score of 3,520 3, points, well ahead of our second place representative. Christy, how'd it go for you today? Went really well. I felt really strong out in the water and very smooth. Did you uh, expect it to take this overall today, or at least the women's trick part of it, with uh, such tough competitors as the Larsons and Helena Shaylander? No, um, well, I expected to get about third, so this is quite a shock to me because I've been skiing with them a long time and I know what they can do. All right, thank you, Chrissy. We'll go right into the men's event then. And our first men's tricker for today will be Jason Paredes from CSUS. We saw Jason this morning in the slalom event, a very slalom, strong slalom skier and a very strong tricker. We'll watch Jason as he performs his toe run. Everybody opening up with toes this morning. Good run for Jason as he finishes out on the end here at the end of the course. You see that the weather has kind of changed this afternoon as the sun's starting to peak out and the wind's coming down. Jason feels pretty good about that. So that'll bring up our next skier from the University of Central Florida. His name is Juan Alvarez. Let's take a look at Juan's trick run as he opens up with a toe pass also. Juan is a very strong and technical trick skier. taking a second to catch his, his balance there as he goes on the outside wake. Good run for Juan. Ooh, very tough maneuver. Central Florida skiers are typically just such solid three event skiers. They're very tough to beat and a good run for Juan Alvarez. That means our next skier from Northeast Louisiana, NLU, his name is Zach Morgan. Zach is a very good skier in the skiing and collegiate league quite a while now. Zach decides not to open up with the tricks, but he opens up with a toe, a toe uh, run. Probably should see some wake flips here. I would assume if he's going to use the hand, hand pass. Let's see if he comes with any of those. Body over. Very tough maneuvers here. There's your flip. Good run for Jack. All right, good job, Zach. And that'll bring up Russell Gay from Rollins College. Russell, another good trick skier. He also opens up with a hand pass. And the advantage of a hand pass is it's a little bit more stable than the tricks. Uh, you guaranteed your points, hopefully. And a lot of guys like to throw in the flip somewhere in there. Try to get the points in the crowd favorites. We'll see Russell here with a body over. Very tough maneuver. And back in. Let's watch Russell and see if he's going to try to top Zach's flip at the end there. Pulls out for it. There he goes. Ooh, good flip. A lot of height on that. And he gets it in there too. Good run for Russell. Congratulations, Russell. We'll bring up Justin Anderson now. His name is, he's from Central Florida. Justin, a, a very strong three event skier. He used to live in California here. In fact, an old roommate of mine. Let's take a look at Justin. He's also doing the hand pass, and I can guarantee you, you will see a flip here. In fact, he may not even wait till the end. He's always trying to please the crowd in some way or another. Let's see if he goes for it here pretty soon. Looks like there it is right there, right in the middle of the pass. Very risky move, because if you don't make that run or that trick, you blow the rest of your run and it can really hurt your team. But Justin, very confident with the trick, with that trick. As he runs out the other run there. Good job for Justin Anderson. That puts Justin Anderson in first place with a score of 4130, 4,130 points. A good run and a good day for Justin Anderson. And Justin takes our trick event, a very tough event. So let's see if we can go get a word with Justin. See how the day went. How would you evaluate the competition? Is it I know there's a lot of top quality skiers here. Did you expect to do as well as you did? Well, we had some real good uh, competition to ski against Billy Allen, Zach Morgan from NLU. Um, I knew, though, that I could win. All I had to go out, do, go out and stand up and uh, do my job, and I'd walk away with the victory. 
All right, once again, congratulations, Justin Anderson, in a very tough trick event today. So at this point, we'll go ahead and take a look at the standings for the women's trick. We see Christy Overton from Florida taking first place. Elena Shaylander from Rollins and Britt and Tom Larson also from Rollins. And at this place, Michelle Mason from Rollins College. Rollins dominating the women's trick event today. And in the men's trick, we saw Justin Anderson, who we just spoke with from Central Florida. Russell Gay in second from Rollins. Zach Morgan from NLU. Juan Alvarez from Florida. And follow Jason Paredes from California State University, Sacramento. And we'll be right back in just a minute with our overall standings up to this point. All right, and the charge ahead we will with the Bob and Bob top ten list, the top ten schools in the nation at this point. Number one, Rollins College. Number two, it's Central Florida. Three, NLU. Four, CSUS. And number five is Texas. We'll go to number six through ten. We can see in number six place is Chico State. Seven is Alabama. Number eight is Michigan. Number nine, Clemson. And rounding out our top ten at ten, Dartmouth College in the Intercollegiate Water Ski Nationals. Let's jump on out to the jump event then. We'll start out with women's jump today. Jumping a very tough and competitive event. And our first skier will be at a NLU, Jane Tully. And Jane looks like she lost a little bit of body position at the bottom of the ramp there, but still pulls a successful first jump for Jane. That's something you don't want to do down there is lose your position coming into that ramp at high speeds. We're seeing Jane on her second jump at NLU. Let's see if she can keep her control a little bit better this time. A little better there. She comes into the ramp. Good jump for Jane. All right, and a good second jump for Jane Tully. As we watch her come back at her third and final jump, this time she's pulling out harder and she's pulling out wider. Let's just see how far Jane can go. NLU. Coming up the ramp in much better form this time. Good, good jump. And a good jump, and that gives out Jane's best jump today was 101 feet. As the NLU fans and cheer her on. They shouldn't stop cheering because here comes Jill Norman right there on her first jump from NLU. Jill trying to beat that 101 foot mark by Jane previously. Jill just a little happy about that as the NLU fans cheer her on. We'll go back to Jill and her jump number two. Jill Norman at NLU. A little bit later this time. You get a little bit better pop at the top. Good jump. Good solid jump. All right, and here comes Jill. And the NLU fans are trying to cheer her on. Can she top the 101 feet and put her right ahead of Jane Tully? Jill will come out a little later this time. 101 feet is a very tough mark to make. Can she do it? Let's cheer her on as she pulls for the ramp. And does she get it? And yes, and I think she does. 100, one foot better than Jane Tully. Jane's going to be a little disappointed, but Jill Norman, 102 feet from NLU, and the NLU fans are very happy about that. And here comes Rollins College, hope to beat 102. Her name's Helena Shaylander as she screams at the ramp in the orange pants. And a good jump for Helena. Very strong skier. We saw her very strong yesterday in the slalom and trick event. Today in the jump event, she's going to see if she can beat out the 102 feet of Jill Norman. Much better day today, a lot less wind, a lot more sun. As Helena Shaylander comes right back at the ramp from Rollins College on her second jump. Let's watch. Ooh, good pop at the top. It jump looks like it's over the 102 mark of Jill Norman, but I can't tell you. Can Helena Shaylander and Rollins College pull out the jump event? They have some very strong trickers, but the jump event is something they really need to, to win today to pull an overall score victory. Watch Helena Shaylander from Rollins on her third and final jump. She is really jumping well today, and she pulls right for the ramp. Screaming, can she beat the 102 feet? And yes, she's way over the 102 at 113 feet, as the Rollins fans appreciate the hard work she's put into it today. Helena will be happy with that. 113 feet for Helena Shaylander. Good jumping today. Now we're going to our next gear from Central Florida. We've seen her earlier. Her name's Christy Overton. She needs to beat 113 feet. And Oh, God, she's on her heels that time. That's an uncharacteristic Christy Overton style. She's usually a very smooth, a very solid jumper. 
Christy probably not happy with that jump. She'll see her come back and make some adjustments. Christy needs to beat 113 feet to floor Central Florida into the lead in this event. This time a little better style. She gets a little bit more up on the front of her skis. Still doesn't look like she's too happy with that jump. And she has yet to beat 113 feet. Rollins College getting very happy at the moment. This is it, her third and final jump from Central Florida. Her name's Christy Overton. Can she take 113 feet? She needs to get this jump. She needs to do it perfect. Comes to the ramp in a lot better form this time. A lot of speed as she hits the top of the ramp. And yes, she sails, folks. 115 feet for Christy Overton. She's got to be happy about that. And that puts Central Florida above Rollins in the jump at this point. One final competitor to beat Christy Overton. Her name is Lisa Fitzgerald. I know she's a tough jumper. She screams at the ramp in the yellow suit. She gets out a little bit of forward skis. Doesn't quite get to the 113 foot mark that time, or 115 of Christy Overton. It's gonna be very tough to beat that mark today, I think. There's no win today to speak of, but very nerves have a big important role in this. This is very tough to get heading at a lot of speed at that blue ramp. And here she comes again in her second jump. Lisa Fitzgerald, mm, better jump that time. I don't know that she got the 115 mark or not. Making it very competitive between NLU and University of Central Florida. Very competitive teams as it is. Lisa coming around the corner getting the word from her coach on the bench there. What can she do? She has to give it all she's got right here. 115 feet, can she make it? Let's cheer her on. She gets out and forward and I think she just, yes she did, she just tied Christy Overton's 115 foot mark. There she is, she got the word right there. Very excited, Lisa Fitzgerald. So let's go to Lisa and get a word and see how she felt about today's event. I'm here with Lisa Fitzgerald, the 1988 Collegiate National Jump winner. Lisa, how'd it go for you today and how was the competition? Competition was tough, but everything worked out to the best of my advantage and our team's advantage, and I'm real happy with my overall performance and theirs just as well. All right, congratulations, Lisa. Let's go take a look at the women's breakdown in the jump event. We can see we have a tie for first with Lisa Fitzgerald and Christy Overton from Central Florida. In third place, Helena Shaylander from Rollins. And in fourth and fifth, Jill Norman and Jane Tully, both from NLU. Let's jump right into the men's jump event. And from Rollins College, we have Mike Hartman on his first jump. Coming right at us in the fluorescent green pants on a beautiful Saturday afternoon. Good jump for Mike. Good distance on that. We should see some events, some jumps hopefully into the 150s today. As there's no wind, perfect conditions, and screaming fans, what else would push you to go to the 150 mark? Let's see if Mike Hartman can get to 150. I don't know if he can, but he's going to give us his best shot right here from Rollins College. His name is Mike Hartman. Let's cheer on Mike as he comes right at the ramp. Cutting a lot later. He got a little bit back on his heels that time. I don't think that was quite as far as his first jump. Mike's trying to think of, well, how can I get to the 150 mark? How can I get to that island out there? And really maybe uh, cheer these fans on. With Rollins College, people are backing him up, and here he comes on his third and final jump. Right at you from Rollins. His name is Mike Hartman. A good, good pop at the top that time. And a good jump for Mike as he makes 142 feet. He's happy about that. And he should be happy. As Mike comes around the island, we'll bring up our next skier from Central Florida. His name is Justin Anderson. We've seen, already seen him in the slalom and the trick event. Let's watch him in the jump. Justin, a good skier in a very bright suit. We couldn't miss him jumping in the middle of the night. Good jump for Justin on his first jump. We've seen Justin jump before in the Cruise Light Tournament as it's made its way around the United States. And Justin's a very good and strong jumper. And we should see, should see some good high scores from Justin today. Here he comes again at us at a second jump. He's pulling a little bit later this time. If you you will make your guidelines on those signs over there. He's right about the beginning of the Conley sign, and he is a lot farther on that jump, a lot farther. And a better jump for Justin as he's trying to pull that 150 mark, the elusive mark that nobody has reached yet at this point today. Justin trying to figure out what he needs to do, and here he comes right back at us, screaming, almost the same cut as he did last time. Oh, God, he got a little bit out front that time. Not quite as good as his second jump, and the highest mark for Justin today is 146 feet, four feet above Mike Hartman. That puts him unofficially in first place at the point. At this point, good jump by Justin Anderson. Here's a guy looking to move Justin out. His name is Danny Sheedy out of University NLU, and he gets oh, good, good movement off the ramp that time. A lot more speed to the ramp than Justin had on his last jump. Good jump from Danny. Let's see if he can top the 146 mark set by Justin just a minute ago. NLU's Danny Sheedy. As NLU fans cheer him on, here he comes right back at you. Later cut this time. He's deep in the hole there. Screaming at the ramp. Oh, and he gets a slide out the side, but a good jump. Ouch. He bangs down, and I don't know whether he made the 146 mark or not. Hard to tell. I guess he, yes, he did. He just tied 146 there with Justin. That means this is it. His third and final jump. Can he put him over the 146 mark? All right, good form, good form. And he just made it one foot over Justin's mark. Danny Sheedy, 147 feet from NLU. 
He's got to be happy about that. That puts him unofficially officially now in first place ahead of Justin Anderson and Mike Hartman. And there go the NLU fans to pick up their skiers as they did all weekend long. From CSUS, how does his name is Jason Predis, a freshman sensation on his first jump. Good jump for Jason. Heck of a good skier, not only slalom, not only trick, but yes, in jumping too. In his red O'Neill suit. And those O'Neill suits are popular this weekend. I don't know what it is. I need to go out and get one myself. Here comes Jason on his second jump. He's got to beat 147. And he's up. I don't know if he... And we get a reading. Oh, he doesn't think he made it, but he did. He just tied 147 on that jump. Okay, we won't tell him, though. We'll let him push him a little bit farther. CSUS needs to get their skiers in the top positions. And here he comes. Jason Freddy screaming at the ramp. He's got to get... And he's up a lot higher that time. Good jump by Jason. And he looks over. Yes, it's 149 feet. I do not believe it. He just pulled himself into first place, the freshman, taking over some of the senior boys here today. And all right. Up. Jason Preddies with 149, and that leaves one person. And that one person's name is Billy Allen, the man in black. Bad boys wear black, and here he comes right at you. Uh, you see a shoe as Billy Allen on his first jump, looking to beat that 149 mark, that good jump. Still getting a lot of speed to the ramp, a lot of air. I don't know if he can beat that 149 mark. A very tough mark to beat by Jason so far. As CSUS cheers him on. Heck, I'd jump 150 feet for that, too. Come on, Bill. Okay, here he comes at you. He needs to beat 149 feet. Let's cheer him on as the sexy people are screaming for him to beat 149. He's right at the ramp. And right now at about 60 miles an hour as he hits the big blue ramp. He's a little bit forward. Couldn't handle the speed he had generated at the ramp that time. Don't think he got the 149 foot mark. Oh, and the Sac State fans going crazy. This is his third and final jump. He's got to beat 149 feet to take him into first place. Billy Allen, the man in black, coming right at you. He's deep. God, is he deep this time. He's coming right at you. Beautiful jump that time. I don't know what he, what did he give? Well, look at him. He's like 158 feet. That will put Billy Allen in first place in our last skier of today's event. Excellent jump. All right. Good job for Billy Allen. And let's get a word with Bill now. Today's jump winner. How'd it go today, Bill? Pretty good. I was real happy with my 158, new national uh, tournament record. That's good. We saw a lot of California skiers doing a lot of strong jumping today. That's kind of unusual when the, the East usually dominates. What do you think happened? Well, I think we're all kind of getting together here at Bell Aqua, and we're uh, jumping together, and we're going a lot farther. I think that's what the story is. All right, and the jubilant Bill Allen. Congratulations, Bill. Let's take a look at the men's overall jump event today. We saw Billy Allen in first place from CSUS, Jason Freddy's in second place from CSUS, Danny Sheedy, Justin Anderson and Mike Harbin from Rollins. Go ahead and also take a look at the overall scores up to this point. In first place still, NLU, 85-25. UCF in second, Rollins College in third with 81-50, CSUS in fourth, and Texas in fifth. And to the bottom five, from Chico in sixth place, Alabama in seventh, Michigan in eighth with 4,075, Clemson in rounding out the top 10, Dartmouth College making a good showing today in their first collegiate showing. And let's take a look at our overall winners for this weekend in each individual event and school. We can see Jason Freddes, our men's overall winner from CSUS. And just to the right of Jason, Christy Overton from University of Central Florida, also a women's overall winner for this weekend. We go to the winner for the overall school. We can see NLU once again pulling out the top spot in the 1988 Collegiate Nationals. Once again, congratulations to NLU, a good, good looking skiers. Here they are again in what used to be what was part of our Mastercraft boat. Let's take a look at one of our freestyle skiers for this weekend. We now have a freestyle skier. Here he comes in. See his first trick. Front flip. Nice exhibition. Hey, we almost had a person do that earlier, but he's going to win a Schmelt Award for it. Yes, he is, Bob. Of course, he landed on his head and not on his feet, and we don't give Schmelt Awards for that either, as you see. Ryan Dolgar and Cindy Thorne getting ready to go into the water and cool off after a hot weekend of skiing. I'd like to take this time to thank all of our sponsors, ATV Productions for an excellent video footage, and especially the Bob and Bob Show for a heck of a good weekend. Thank all of you for coming out, and we enjoyed having you all out in California this year. Hope to see you back soon.